western coast of Canada, near the island of Newfoundland, there's a stretch of water known for being rocky and treacherous to ships. The island's archaeology office says there are thousands of wrecks near here. What's believed to be one of them washed up recently on the shore of the Canadian province. The ship was about 100 feet long. Researchers think it's from the 1800s. Some say it's possible it was swept off the ocean floor by a hurricane that passed by this area in 2022. But they've had to move fast to recover whatever they can because the tides that brought it here are expected to sweep the wreck back out to sea in the coming days. Archaeologists have gotten some wooden planks and pieces of metal from the ship. They say determining the type of wood, the age of it, and the makeup of the metal could help them figure out where it came from and when it sailed. That process could take months, by which time the mysterious shipwreck may once again be lost. going down to the sea in ships today on the world from A to Z with several stories taking place off the coast. I'm Carl Azus. Next stop is near the border between the United States and Mexico, where so much media attention's been focused because of the number of people who've been crossing it into the United States. 2021 set a record in the number of migrants who tried to enter America illegally. That record was broken in 2022, and that year's record was broken again in 2023. Some critics have blamed the policies of U.S. President Joe Biden, saying they encourage people to unlawfully cross into America. The Biden administration has said it's taken action, but that it's limited in what it can do without a comprehensive immigration reform law passed by Congress. And though many lawmakers agree that border security is an issue that needs to be addressed, Democrats and Republicans haven't been able to agree on how to address it. So the problem persists. One location where illegal border crossings take place at great risk to the migrants involved is at the U.S. maritime border with Mexico. Can't go through the cup, we'll get stuck. This is a side of U.S. Customs and Border Protection you don't often see, and for good reason. With Border Patrol on land, these agents handle the skies and seas. They're part of AMO, Air and Marine Operations. It's going to be just off our starboard beam. Heading right for the beach. And what does it sound like, a boat or jet ski? They don't have a visual of it, so all they know is that there's a radar contact eastbound right behind us back here. Headed our way, so they kill the lights and we wait in the dark. The pursuit's coming right to us right now. Coming this way? Yeah. After a few minutes, still nothing. Seems the suspected smuggler on a jet ski turned back. There's a lot of them coming, so we're, we're, we're constantly busy. A lot of times we're getting people that don't want to be caught because they carry criminal records, they're uh, members of gang. And then you get family units too that are, that are, the smugglers have convinced that this is a safe and easy passage. In the past year, the agents say it's become increasingly deadly, but like drug trafficking, migrant smuggling is a business. They're reckless with their lives, they're reckless with other people's lives. Do we know, Kurt, are they, are they connected often to cartels? Do we know their background? At a smaller level, yeah, this is all cartel driven. They often launch in the dark of night, leaving from various points along the Mexican coast. Once they cross the maritime boundary line, the ocean's border separating the U.S. and Mexico, the smugglers usually head to the beaches of San Diego County, where they drop off the migrants. Though more recently, they've ended up cruising even farther north, to places like Malibu. Just before 2 a.m. Tuesday, officials say roughly two dozen migrants scattered from this boat as soon as it hit the beach. Border Patrol was able to detain 19 of them. The rest, somewhere in Malibu, more than 130 miles from the southern border. Officials tell us the number of incidents along the southwest coast is up threefold over the last five years. And they say migrants like these often pay tens of thousands of dollars for a one-way ticket on the open ocean. Moments like these, where boats filled with migrants rush towards the shoreline, a near nightly occurrence now. Over the last three years, we've seen an exponential increase in maritime smuggling. They don't understand fully the peril that these smugglers are, are putting them in. Forecasting the smugglers' schedules and routes, impossible. So the agents work all hours. Living in the dark does kind of wear you out, so yeah. now it's kind of nice to get a little sun now and then. Physically, emotionally, securing our borders, especially on the ocean, takes a toll. But there are perks like clocking out at sunrise. Yeah, it looks pretty. My favorite time of the day.
on this date in world history. February 8th, 1587 was when Mary, Queen of Scots, was executed. Controversial marriages and religious struggles factored into her reign. She was Catholic, but most of her country was Protestant. And 19 years after she was forced to step down from the throne, she was found guilty of supporting a failed plot to murder her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I of England. That's where Mary, Queen of Scots, was living at the time, and she was given the death sentence for treason. On this date in 1837, a U.S. representative from Kentucky made history. Because the Electoral College couldn't agree on whom should serve as vice president, the Senate elected Richard Johnson to the role. He's the only person ever to have been selected in accordance with a part of the 12th Amendment that gives the Senate that power. Upward of knowledge. A Carolina rig, magnetic brake, and planer board all factor into what activity? Fishing, motorcycling, weaving, surveying. While there are numerous applications for magnetic brakes, the only activity that involves all three of these terms is fishing. The U.S. Labor Department says the economy added 353,000 new jobs last month. That's more than economists expected, and it happened despite an increase in layoffs in technology and finance fields. 74,000 new jobs were in professional services. Think marketing, architecture, law. Healthcare added 70,000 jobs. Retail accounted for 45,000. If you live near the ocean or are willing to move there, one potential field is made of water. Lane Bullich is a 20-year-old fishing captain in Kodiak, Alaska. I really enjoy the captaining part of it. It's nice. It's cool having that responsibility and being in charge of the boat, and um, uh, you just you learn so much. I mean, because you're the you're a plumber, the electrician, you're everything on the boat. But Bullich is an exception, especially for his age group. In recent years, the average age for career fishermen jumped from about 40 years old to 50. I guess people my age don't really think about this as like a career. It is more of a way just to make money quickly, where you can make, you know, like 20 grand in the summer and then be good after that. You know, it's a contract, so once it's over, it's over. That in and out again culture makes it hard to maintain experienced crews. It's hard to find people. I mean, that's just the challenge. Captains often have to train new hands every year. Why aren't those guys fishing as a career? The initial cost of permits and gear are a factor, not to mention they spend weeks, even months, away from their families. But the experience, skill, and knowledge of fishermen aren't to be taken for granted because their work is critical for the world's food supply. Some fishermen and conservation groups are working with the government to bring up the next generation of career fishermen through grants and training programs. Captain Darren Platt also tries to make his boat as comfortable as possible to encourage crew members to stay. The golden days of fishing are kind of behind us and now it's kind of a recovery of trying to bring the fish back and trying to keep this uh, viable way of making a living. Taking a moment to recognize you these requests both came from the request a shout out link at worldatoz.org. From Valdez, Alaska, the last frontier, we welcome Mrs. Humphreys class. Thanks for watching from Valdez High School. And from the land of enchantment, that's New Mexico, Mrs. Salcido's class is online at Alta Vista Middle School in Carlsbad. Yesterday's show featured what was called an owl burrito. Today, we've got the puppy version of that. If you don't think this is cute, you're wrong. Look again, puppies. These two little snuggle biscuits were found huddled in the rain on the side of a busy highway in California. The sheriff's deputy who rescued them wrapped them up in towels and took them to an animal shelter. The dogs are gonna be just fine. They're not water dogs, but they were water log dogs. Life was rough until someone threw them a bone, gave them shelter in a shelter better than a dog house where they could have pup peace and quiet, get squeaky toy clean, and chew over their adventures that were truly a tucked tale to tell. I'm Carl Azus, always thankful you're watching the world from A to Z. You mean the world to me.